Welcome to Dyson's Mirror. My name is Neil Aus and this is a tutorial on how to miss your planet. Damn it. Welcome to Dyson Sphere Program. My name is Neil Aus and this is a tutorial on how to establish new bases on a foreign planet. And this is, a, I call it the Polar Hub and I can't find my planet. Where's my planet? There it is. All right, we got a, a planet here, a target. The, basically, the thing is, this is both an efficient, effective, and quite cool way of doing it. It'll save you so much time, but it does take a bit of time to set up and get going. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a brand new planet here, never been visited before, and we're going to land here. And then I will show you how to establish the base. First thing, first, I brought very little things in my inventory because I have seen other guides that are like, oh, bring this, bring that, bring that. And uh, no matter what you intend to bring, you're always going to forget it, forget some of it. Well, at least I am. So the first thing we want to do is find the North Pole. You can use the digits here uh, to find the North Pole. You can also have the grid overlay with the construction mode, and then you will find the North Pole here. Now, I'd like to actually put something down immediately, but I can't. What I'm going to do here is, while I build the Polar Hub that will make sure that you got everything you need for establishing a, an outpost here, I will be explaining what we're doing. So we're going to simply start by going with the transportation. The only things we have are these interstellar logistics hubs, and they're going to be placed at very exact locations. So I'll be placing them at these locations. You can see here, uh, basically there is a tile here where there's two tiles, and I'm going to put it there on the middle. And that's you can put them, of course, anywhere you like, but if you want to copy the way I'm doing it, and I've been had lots and lots of requests on a guide on how to do this. Because as you build them here, you can also build the other layer out about here. You can see you can go too close, too close, too close, too close, too close, and then this is possible and you go one more out. That is actually in the middle of these three tiles, one, two, three squares, which will form a band around the planet that you really can't use for much because it's it's so close to the uh, to to the poles that uh, the tiles are so small and cramped together. When we've now built all of these, they are of course unpowered, and we will find ourselves with a completely empty inventory. But that is not a problem at all. And wouldn't it be fun if I if I just uh, missed something here? There. All right. So this is the proper form starting layout the idea here is that you will request everything we need and we'll use those things as we uh, as we progress the way that i do this and this is purely so that it's easier for me to remember moving forward is that i am going to see i don't have any inventory i'm going to say the first one you can choose anyone in the inner lane the first one will do what is on tab number one power so you will request the things that are on tab number one the things that you might want and uh, I don't really want anything else those are the things I want there are obviously a lot more things here that you could request but I reserve those for other places and then comes the next one you if you'd have some you put some logistics vessels in uh, do not put any uh, warpers in I'm by the way building this towards the end game uh, so that you can kind of get a sense of what it is and then afterwards we're going to talk about how that would differ from an early game build First thing you need to do is set that one, minimum load of vessels, so that you will send vessels from your your location where you have everything stored, your home base, which is another tutorial, to this location without the, even if they are not full. Otherwise, it is not good. And um, there we go. And I'm just going to request the absolute minimum here. I'm requesting 100 of each you will see that some of them will get a higher number this is because if there is more stored at the home location the global hub you could say then it will send it out if it's available so that's a that's kind of a, a thing there this one was said 1000 so this is number one then I go around here and I choose just tab number two and I always do all of them even if I don't request it. So for example, on this planet, I don't have oil, I don't have uh, water, so I don't care about those, but I still mark it because you never know. And also there, and these I'll just mark as gray because I don't uh, need them at all. Moving on to the third one. The third one is a bit of an exception because it's the most important one. Well, there's more of them that are more the most important. This is the three things on the tab, the conveyors, the sorters, and the, no, yeah, the conveyor sorters and splitters. But I also add at this point the assembly machines and the smelter because when you're building big things, these are the things you want en masse. So let's uh, do that. I am going to say uh, 2000 here. You can set your own amounts, but um, 
I, this is what I said. And 1,000 here. And the other ones, I'll just take a me meager 100. And I think there's going to be a problem with uh, this one, but that's uh, that nothing to do with the tutorial, but actually just doing with me being lazy on my base. Yeah, it sends out 400 instead. That's okay. So we can build big on this planet at, at this moment. Somehow I'm not getting this one. Mm. There could be all sorts of reasons. And this is going to be number four, which is actually also a different one because it's super boring. So this one will actually be in charge of getting one more thing. Oh, did I actually do that? Yes, I did. Set this minimum load of vessels first. Or at least do it in a certain rhythm. There. And at this one, I will also request some fuel. And now I'm going to do very late game. So I'm going to use the antimatter fuel. You could also do other sorts of fuels uh, if you are at different stages of the game. And I'll come back to that later. But for, we're going to get that one here. So now we've been all the way around. And then I go one tile out. And that's going to be tab number five. Tab number five would be where we had the smelters and the assemblers. But we'll do all the other ones instead. Because that's fitting here. Which means we're going to start with a refinery. We're going to take a chemical plant, we're going to take a fractionator, and we are going to take a miniature particle collider. Now this is also interesting because these ones, you probably very often don't need them. Oh, this is an annoying thing. This is why I always set them to gray when I don't want them, so that I can more easily see it, and so that they don't send a supply vessel out here. If you want it, you can request it, but usually I don't request anything if I don't have an oil planet going. Now we come up to number six, which is, well, I think the most important one. This is where we request interstellar locations. Did I, yeah, I did set it here. The interstellar logistic station, and we are going to request some drones, and we're gonna get some here. And then this is also where we request the warpers, if you have those available. So this one you could say is the most important. We're gonna go this one. And I'm going to get more. I'll take 400. That seems like a decent amount. Only 100 of these. Well, okay, give me 1,000 then. I guess we're going to build something here. Uh, I'll request 100, 1,000 of these because I don't care. There we go. And that's going to be... The number 7 is also a weird one because number 7 is where I can request uh, the stuff that is on tab number 7. That's nothing really here. So labs you'll only get really have that on one lab but what i do instead is actually take and say if there are some of these like uh, related to the sphere if you have a sphere then that's where you request those well most likely you are not going to be building a sphere on most two planets so that is going to be irrelevant but you know this one though we are going to need some sustainable power so let's request a few of those there so that one is coming in and then the last one the number eight which is also the most important one this one we guessed foundation and this one is not set lower because i actually want full foundation here and that goes in so we are now requesting things into this mediocre location still nothing is really working but we can now start actually getting materials we're going to get a few of the things that we need Ah, we also got that one, good. And look at look, our number one, so we can get the power poles, we can get this one, these are the ones we're gonna need just to fill out the rest of this uh, the setting. So what I'm doing here, now we move on to the next part, the other infrastructure. What I do is in the middle, I have a charging location. So when you land, you we wanna make it sure that it's easy to find this location from orbit. So we put it, put a charging location here in the middle so you always know that if you come in and you're dead on charge just land in the middle it's gonna be fine what else do we need well we um, we need to make sure that we have power we don't really have it yet and this is where I have found a the optimal location for me is right there <laughs> one two one two now if you do it in your own way you will have other locations that are better for you but if you want to copy exactly because the reason is then it can't be quite there, but it can be right there. And that's, it's just after doing this 20 times or something, you find out that there are some places on some locations that are better than others. And then you kind of get into the habit of just doing it the same way every time, which I, I would also really strongly advocate doing it the same way every time. We still have a massive problems in terms of power, but we can at least start working on some of it. We're gonna find tower number four. See now this one is minus, then you already know, okay, if this is two, then four is this one. And we have got the fuel coming in. So let's make a location where we can use the fuel. I'm going to make a little beautiful loop in here in the middle. <clears throat> Don't do that. Let's do the loop here. 
will make a loop. This will be our power loop. This is where I put my power plants. And this was number five, four. So I can take it. Okay. Okay. Autosave. We're just going to wait for that. Unfortunately, well, our world is so big that autosave takes a bit of time now. And that seems like a good location. That does not seem like a good location at all. It's a bit slanted, isn't it? And that's the one. There we go. So we're going to now need some power. Let's look at number seven. That will be over here. And we now have some of these. Let's get some of those. Okay, that's a bit much. <laughs> that's a bit much. But, you know, at some point in the game, you just don't really care. We're going to put this all the way around. You could do make do with four of these. But, um, yeah, I like the, doing this eight. That will give you 600 megawatts of power, sustainable, and that will be pretty damn nice. So we're going to set these up, and of course, nothing will work yet. And this is the only thing that you have to be aware of when uh, when doing this setup here. If you ever run out, it cannot kickstart itself because it cannot. The solders here are out of power. You would need to have 10% of the total power need you have here in order for for you to kickstart it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kickstart one of them and whoosh, we have it here. This location I'm calling uh, the, it, we're calling it the po Polar Hub, but it's also been, uh, I don't know, colloquially na named the, uh, I'll take this one as well, there, and take more, actually take all of it. Uh, it's also been named the Temple of Effectiveness. I really like the fact that it's a temple, so we are going to call it the Temple of Effectiveness. I am going to need some splitters for one more thing. So you can see that already by looking at one of them and saying, ah, this is number two, then you know sorters are under number three. We're going to build some sorters, uh, sorry, uh, not sorters, uh, splitters. We're going to have splitters here because at this point in the game, I also want to make sure that we have a clean distribution of warpers to all of them. And instead of just requesting them between them, I have to opt it for, and I don't really know if that's a super good idea or not, but I have opted for just transporting them by belts. It does contain a lot of th things on the belt, but uh, yeah. Now this is the way we do it. You can also just request them from everyone, from everything to everything, with a minimum of 100. Uh, but then you need a few drones, but only a free if you. I do this one. You're welcome to do something else. And then we've been all the way around. Now what we have is we have our charging, we have our power, we have our distribution of warpers to all of them. They now have warpers, all of them. What I'm going to do is I will, and this is mainly something I do, is uh, put. Uh, put them in here this is not necessary I just do this for completion it is a complete waste of <laughs> waste of, uh, of, of these uh, vessels but I do it for sort of sense of completion that they now have it also looks better when you have that one we are not complete though we are not complete this is gonna be number five so let's go over to number seven number seven is usually the most boring one so we're gonna choose that one this thing is purely a flavor thing so uh, feel free to do that or not that is completely up to you and I am, but I am going to do it. So what I'm going to do here is make there, and we're going to edge that all the way around. Get our robots, uh, our drones here to get that sorted. Oh, we also should have a lot of uh, there. There we go. And then we get request uh, ten thousand more concrete. So we want to sp to set up concrete afterwards. Well, actually, we can set up concrete right now. In here, just get concrete everywhere, oops, everywhere except outside of this area. No one will see that. What? Yeah, concrete. Concrete everywhere. Hide the ugly. And I will do it. continue this one around here and then continue on our quest to concrete it up. I wonder how much we, we can actually see how much concrete we're using for uh, this kind of thing so you can work you can consider whether you find it worth it or not i do and especially because you really don't have you don't never have a shortage of concrete because it's so cheap and you will set up like stupid amounts of that anywhere anyway there we go and i will take this one and not bring things in anymore and we can just pave the rest of it with concrete as well and that should be, come on, can you get it with the 10,000 we have here? Sh 
should be good. I think we're pretty much all over the place. And I can now take this one out. Boop. All right, that is the Temple of Effectiveness. What you can see now is when you come in from a from orbit, you can see this very, very clear delim delineation here. And uh, this is the Polar Hub. I always build it on the North Pole. Anything inside, I will not farm this or mine it. I'll just hope that there isn't anything. If there's something, you can do it. Uh, the, of course, the purple line is, well, that's a more of a signature thing. But uh, maybe if you have a North Pole with inputs and a South Pole with outputs, you can do like green and red or something that, like that or your own coloring or, or not at all. But it serves like a really, really strict delineation between this is the hub and that's the rest of the world. The hub here is, and uh, this is actually a very literal hub if you look at it like this. A hub is the center of a wheel, and this is the center of the wheel with a hub. And then you have spokes running out here that support the rest of the wheel. So it is quite literally a hub, this one. And that's uh, that's basically how you build it. It took about 15 minutes to do. And if you consider this, that you land on a foreign planet, spend 15 minutes, and then you have something that will power your base and give you everything you need to build without any worry, then I'm, I'm going to say that's totally worth spending 15 minutes on. Let's talk about uh, some of the variations that you might want to uh, uh, might want to do. For example, you are not don't have warpers. It's early game. Well, then don't build this one. It's pretty simple, right? So don't build this when you have the warpers. You request it in. I request it in the number six, because then I can. Then that's where I feel it, it fits together. They, these are the, the vessels are the ones that use the warpers. So yeah, they should be here. And the um, other thing is like the artificial suns. What are your other options? Well, you have uh, the option of doing thermal. It's the, it's the first option. What I would do is take number seven because that's the least valuable one. When it doesn't really have anything you should you must have, then you request, for example, thermal power plants. I don't think I actually have those produced. You can request thermal power plants to be built. And then you request some graphite, for example, that you can then build. I would just build it like this. For the power plant, I would data chain them out here. You could also do uh, the next tier. That would be fusion power. Let's see if I actually have so. I don't think I do. Maybe I do. Yeah, I do. One thousand. Just let's casually get one thousand in here. And <laughs> so we're going to get one thousand fusion power plants here. And then you request some deuterium, deuterion fuel that you can then put in here and. It's pretty good, but this, the artificial suns at the very late game have the advantage that it looks absolutely glorious when you look at it. So that is, uh, there are two things that sort of go with this uh, design that are, um, that are kind of essential. And those will be some of the two of the following tutorials I will be providing because I'm going to do massive amount of tutorials and they're going to be slightly different from other tutorials you might see. And I want to do sort of like practical applications such as this one. Another one is how you are going to split the planet into workable sections with the fault lines and the meridians, just understanding how the world is built. Another one is, of course, if we just magically set up that we request things from here, well, there has to be somewhere somewhere else that provides all of this otherwise it just doesn't work right so that's um that's going to be definitely the, another thing that we want to set up but for now here you have it a beautiful setup that we can uh, enjoy you have a now a planet that is ready to go and ready to expand thank you very much for watching if you like this tutorial hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you want to see more and of course leave a comment if there's something i'm missing or if you have good ideas for upcoming tutorials. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Take care, and as always, stay effective.